Welcome members and friends of Highland Congregational Church to this, a Bible study on the Gospel according to Matthew. This being the sixth of nine, as I've extended from the original four out to nine, and I'm hopeful that you find this an experience that illumines your understanding of Scripture. Uh, we're looking today at Jesus and compassion, the compassion of God as Jesus was able to convey and reflect it. If there's something important out of Hebraic thought that God offered to the people, heartfelt mercy. Now in the Latin, compassion is, we use that, uh, we understand that word to be, to suffer with someone. But in the Greek and reflecting the Hebrew, heartfelt mercy is what was ultimately understood as the way one would be compassionate to another to offer and extend. And so that was the way that persons would might find righteousness. Now that's an interesting thought because oftentimes when people hear that word about being righteous, we generally think of one who does the right thing. And that though can be important, but righteousness to the Hebraic thought was also very much tied to being compassionate with that heartfelt mercy of God. It's the highest, highest form of righteousness, in fact. Now, Jesus conf uh, was reflecting compassion, and uh, Matthew used this term five times in his gospel, reflecting on Jesus, his uh, encountering people. So we're going to be understanding that acts of compassion, as opposed to also just what we might think of, just the feelings that are associated with, with compassion actually doing something and it's not so much again what Jesus said but how he said it not just what Jesus did but how he did it and that's where we move ourselves from time to time we when the Spirit of Christ comes upon us we realize that like Jesus we move from being self-centered to other centered to being about another person and caring for their interest. And Jesus wanted to reflect to his disciples and to all whom he encountered that this is a part of being in the kingdom of God. So, we read today in the eighth and ninth chapters about Jesus and compassion. The first encounter is with uh, Peter's mother-in-law. Now, Peter's mother-in-law uh, was in her home and Jesus had been invited in and immediately Jesus went to her because she was ill and without being asked he approached her he took her hand and he healed her and that was important for Matthew to uh, be able to convey because that was so contrary to culture of that time that men would not necessarily approach a woman much less reach and touch her and so he was far reaching to her as well as we'll hear to others that he was willing to go beyond what was the usual parameter around a rabbi, a teacher like himself. Uh, it's, I want to read this because it says, when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began to serve him. Now, Matthew connects something very vital here in that Jesus reaching to others could ultimately bring them into the service of God. And so that there was something in return, not as though that was his motivation, but was something that Matthew understood was the way people would come to Christ Jesus and to God. So we have that experience. The next in the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 28, and I'll read a portion of that. When Jesus arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men came from tombs and met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God, they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? These men expected the usual encounter with anybody who would come their way. 
we have the sense that maybe Jesus went looking for them because it would not be usual that Jesus would find himself moving towards the place of tombs. He was always looking for people alive, but he knew that there were these persons. He may have heard of them. And so as he approached them, they were fearful that they would be tortured, be treated as usual with hostility, sometimes being chained, the most inhumane ways that persons could tr treat another. And here Jesus, again, far-reaching in his approach and his touch for people and their, in their life of where they were. And it's important for us to understand something about this of Jesus wanting and wishing to have people understand how God would see them, the Father in heaven. So what Jesus did reflected what the Father would do, as we know him to be the Son of God. Then in the ninth chapter, beginning in the first verse, Jesus finds it comes across a, a paralytic. In fact, actually, the friends of this paralytic brought them, brought him before Jesus. And I read this to you. It says, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Now here Matthew connects something very vital, the physical and the spiritual. And we know that even in the writing, for instance, the letter of, of James, that one understood that to be healed, one would have to understand their sins being forgiven, a way, a means of healing, because there are different types of disease, there's different types of ailments. And Matthew wanted us to, to understand that Jesus saw the totality of a person. He didn't just see the man as a paralytic. He saw a man who was dealing with issues within. And so he reached. Now, of course, one of the difficult problems of that was him very much saying, your sins are forgiven. Because there were those who heard that. And that was something that you could not say. That was blasphemy in most Hebrews' mind. Because only God could forgive. Jesus wished to convey to these persons that forgiveness was theirs. He was able to pass it on as he would later tell his disciples that when you forgive someone, they're forgiven. And though that was contrary to the common thought, Jesus was willing to step forward with that, to be able to convey a compassion about the heart as well as the body. Now, Continuing on, uh, there is a problem with uh, p persons that, uh, that Jesus encountered. Uh, Jesus heals a blind and a mute person. And what we find was that with a blind person, he touched his eyes. Again, the touch here that is so vital and important. And also that uh, these persons would find that Jesus was looking at the demonic that would take possession of persons and hold them and restrain what would come normal and natural to anyone else. It was symbolic of what ails all of humanity, the fullness, the full breadth. And I think that's important for us to not lose sight of. The crowds Jesus saw, when he saw crowds, he had compassion on them. And it, in a sense, went personal rather than just seeing the multitudes, to seeing individuals. And Matthew, again, in these two chapters, leads us to understand that Jesus, like before, had fed 5,000, the multitudes. Now he was reaching to individuals, as he might reach to any of us in our times of need. I think that Matthew wished to convey that again and again and again. It was, he, it was a time when people felt helpless and harassed even because they suffered with their ailments. If you were blind, you were suffered because people pushed you aside. If you were demon possessed, you were ostracized out. If you had disorder of, of uh, any kind of, of the mind or the spirit, again, you were seen as unclean. Matthew 
wanted this to be something that was at the heart of Jesus' ministry. Compassion reaching to persons. Now, I want to end this today because Matthew, in the end of the ninth chapter, offers these words. He says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Matthew right here in this gospel, a very significant point, is saying that ultimately how Jesus went out into the world would bring those who would serve, from Peter's mother-in-law to those who were blind and mute, the paralytic, any suffering, the healing would bring one to that sense of thankfulness to God. And I think when we realize that our ministry, as individuals, each of you, whatever you can do, we know we do it out of that ultimate thankfulness to God. And so with that, please join me as we close this in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, blessed and merciful God, we know that it is your intent to still reach with the kind of tenderness and compassion that, you, that Jesus reached to others. But you are still reaching to us today, whatever might ail us or any who is surrounding us, that we can bring them and ourselves before you and to know that your touch is a touch of love, heartfelt mercy. And Lord, we pray now that blessings will be abundant as we begin again to see Jesus, not alone by what he taught, but how he taught it, not whom he healed, but how he healed, and that we would understand that we are called into that ministry in the same manner, in the same way. These things we pray now, giving thanks again to you. In Jesus' name, amen.